Which of the 16 personality types makes the most money? The most scratch. The most guac. And more importantly, perhaps, what type makes the least? And why? Which types are most likely to be CEO wolves of Wall Street? And which are gonna end up living in a van down by the river? Today, we're gonna be looking at the data from the income effect of personality type published by Truity in 2019. That's right, this video isn't just me making up stuff. <laughs> this report ranks the 16 personality types from the highest earners to the lowest. But more importantly, it gives us the data to examine how each aspect of personality impacts how much money you are likely to make. So not only will this video explain why certain personality types tend to earn more, but it will also explain why some of the lower earning types on this list actually choose to earn less. And in the end, it might not be such a big deal if your type is lower on the list. Because in all likelihood, if I know my audience, your type is at the bottom. <laughs> but mine too, so we're all equal here. All right, so let's begin by just looking at the four letter preferences. We'll start basic, we'll lay the groundwork. And while you might think that these four preferences tell the whole story, there are some interesting outliers. So first of all, who generally makes more, introverts or extroverts? The answer is, extroverts. As we know, they tend to have more outgoing traits such as being expressive, energetic, even optimistic. This makes it easier for extroverted types to network and meet others in their field of work. And knowing the right people is essential nowadays in order to get the job you want or a promotion or even a raise or a rise as they say in London. That was a terrible <laughs> British accent. What was I doing? Okay, next, do thinkers or feelers earn more? So this one may be easy to guess, but the thinking types have a huge lead over feeling types when it comes to income. There are still a couple thinking types who don't earn a lot. We'll address those specific outliers in just a little bit. So thinking types in general look at life as a series of problems to be solved. So their mind is naturally oriented towards jobs that present complex challenges which may pay more. For example, the highest paying occupation in the US is anesthesiologists. You know, the doctors who put you to sleep before surgery and then make sure you wake up afterwards. It's a job that requires a very firm grasp of science and math and the ability to make logical decisions very quickly or you will kill someone, literally. And yes, there are feelers, many feelers who are anesthesiologists out there, but it's an occupation that I'm guessing just naturally attracts more thinking types. Furthermore, as discussed in a previous video, which you can, uh, <laughs> it's right here. Thinking types tend to be more comfortable with conflict and confrontation than feeling types are. This means that thinking types are more comfortable doing things like asking for a raise or competing for higher level positions. This is not even to mention that those higher level management and CEO positions favor individuals who are able to make calculated business decisions without worrying about how people will feel about them. Like sometimes it's necessary to fire someone, but it don't feel good. Another large differentiator between the types is the judging and perceiving preference, the J or P at the end of the type. This is probably due to the fact that J types like to have a plan in advance, whereas P types prefer to go with the flow and plan as they go as they like to say. As an example, an INTJ might say to themselves, in five years, I wanna be a lead programmer at a major software company. While an INTP might say to themselves, I wanna get better at understanding programming, so I will find a job, learn a bit, explore some options, and see where that leads me. In both scenarios with both types, they could very well end up in the same job one day, but the J type started with the end point in mind. So this could lead a J type to start a career path earlier while P-types change directions a few times before figuring out what they really wanna do or before being forced to just get a job because you're 32 and <laughs> what are you doing with your life? If you are astute, you will notice that I just jumped over the intuition versus sensing preference. That's because interestingly, there is no statistically significant correlation between that preference and income. This is because the S versus N preference is affecting how we take in information and neither sensing nor 
intuition necessarily gives any advantages when it comes to earning money. So we now know generally how the individual preferences come into play, but as I mentioned earlier, that's not the whole story. We're gonna look at the rankings of the 16 personalities and you're gonna be like, wow. wow. Even though thinkers tend to earn more than feelers, that really did not help out the INTP. We'll also look at which types are most likely to earn zero dollars, like they are unemployed. <laughs> Furthermore, what types are most likely to be late bloomers spending more time in school and becoming high earners in their 40s and beyond? Okay, this study by Truity averaged the annual income of all 16 personality types according to a survey of more than 72,000 people. That's like the population of a small city. The highest earners of the 16 personalities are the ENTJ earning on average 60K annually and the ESTJ averaging a little under 58K annually. After this is a bit of a drop off to the three and four spots. We have the ENTP at number three with 54K and the ESTP at number four with 53K. In the five through 13 spots, all of the types are within $10,000 of each other. In order, we have the ISTJ in fifth making about 50,000, ESFJ in sixth making about 48K, ENFJ in seventh making about 47K, INTJ in eighth making about 47K, just a few hundred less than the ENFJ. This one is surprising because the ENTJ, an extremely similar type, is number one on the list. And we will address why this difference may be happening a bit later. I mean, it's happening now, but we will explain it later. Is that what you call a dangling participle? Next, we have the ESFP at number nine with 54K, 45, I read the number backwards. <laughs> and now it starts to drop off a bit faster. ENFP and ISFJ at 10 and 11, each making around 42,000. At number 12 is the ISTP making about 41,000. So the lowest four earners of the 16 personalities are coming up and it becomes a pretty steep dive at this point all the way to the end. We're going off the rails on a crazy train at this point. At 13, the INFJ averaging about 40,000. The INTP is at number 14, earning on average 38K annually. And this is especially surprising because an extremely similar type to the INTP, the ENTP is number three on the list, earning on average $16,000 more a year. So we'll have to figure out what's going on with that. Oh boy, number 15, earning on average 35K is the ISFP. Then the lowest earning type earning on average $34,000 annually, which is roughly 26,000 less than the number one earner, we have the INFP at number 16. Interestingly, the ISFP and INFP, the bottom two earners, are the opposite types of the ENTJ and ESTJ, the top two earners. Coincidence? I don't know what that word means. Let's unpack this. Why are the INFJ, INTP, ISFP, and INFP the bottom earners? And if we throw in the ISTP at number 12, we see that all four IP types are in the bottom five. What's up with that? Is someone playing a joke on us? Uncle Frank, is this a joke? First, let's look at a fact that would really bring down a type's average income, namely not having a job. Because throwing a bunch of zeros into the mix will really bring down the average fast. The types most likely to report being unemployed all of the IP types. Okay, that tracks. But is it because they just can't find a job? Or is it because they are more comfortable just doing their own thing and don't feel the need to climb a corporate ladder, man? If being an extrovert is correlated with being outgoing and connecting with others professionally, and being a J-type is associated with having a plan and getting started on it, then it makes sense that the IPs on the other end of the spectrum would rather just follow their own path and chase what is personally interesting to them rather than just get a job right away. It's like I've said for a long time on this channel, the IP types are really just following their own path in life. They kind of ignore what everyone else is trying to tell them and they're like, I'm doing my own thing. Even if it means being unemployed or they'll be like, I'm not unemployed, I'm a writer. <laughs> I'm writing a book, I'm not getting paid for it, but one day, I may. Of course, one major reason for people to be voluntarily unemployed is if they are continuing their education. I know a lot of you watching 
our students right now. And this has a major effect on the rankings. All the types that have the I and N preferences, so INFJ, INFP, INTP, INTJ, were the most likely to report that they were still students above the age of 21. So they're probably studying to get an advanced degree of some kind, which leads them to starting their careers later. I would guess this is due to the intuitive types being drawn to purely theoretical concepts and their preference to explore the world in an abstract way rather than an experiential way. So you add into that an introvert's preference to spend lots of time by themselves, like reading, writing, thinking, questioning my life choices. <laughs> and you've got the perfect combination for the types that want to get advanced degrees. Speaking of entering the workforce later, the ranking we looked at earlier is just averaging everyone over the age of 21. But what if we focused in on each of the specific decades of life? What I mean is just looking at the types in their 20s or their 30s and so on, do the ranking shift? Could this give some of the lower earning types some hope that they will not be poor forever? Emma. The answer is Yes. yes, or C for my Spanish and Italian viewers. Okay, so the ENTJ, for example, are number one on the overall rankings. The highest earner is still at number one in their 20s and 30s. But in their 40s, the ENTP shoots out of frickin' nowhere to become the highest earner of all the 16 personalities. Why is this? Well, maybe ENTPs just need a while to get fully ramped up. Or maybe they just spend lots of time in school and exploring their options. Another example is the INTP who ranks 14th overall in terms of earnings, but in their 50s, they've jumped way up the chart and are tied for fifth. I guess that schooling pays off eventually. Along with the ENTP and INTP, the other IN types also tend to be late bloomers. Of course, pretty much every type shows a jump in income between their 20s and 30s, which makes sense. I mean, in your 20s, you're, you're just starting your career, and in your 30s, you should be a bit established. But the IN types experience a second jump between their 30s and 40s. Why is this? I, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it takes these types extra long to get established in their career paths or maybe it just takes them a while to get the hang of <laughs> reality yeah. which extroverted and sensing types might just more naturally understand thanks for watching and until next time stay cool and attractive <laughs>